welcome. Thank you to uh, our two guests. <laughs> uh, I'm Chris Simonson, if you haven't had a chance to meet me yet. And I'm taking over from Norm Tiedemann. Uh, and Norm's not even on this call tonight. So this is this is a first. It's the first uh, coach call that he's missed. So uh, we're gearing up for our five different tournaments in January and are looking forward to continuing the season. So thank you for coaching and welcome. Thanks for coming tonight. And feel free to pipe up at any point if you have a question. Uh, but given your experience level, probably not. Huge thank you to our sponsors again for everything that they do for us and uh, couldn't do it without them. All right. So just a reminder that we're fully in person and that uh, friends and family are welcome in the judging rooms and the pit area. Uh, but remind your families uh, or have safety glasses available for them. We will have some for sale, but we do not have the loaner safety glasses anymore since COVID. Uh, but we will uh, have the safety glasses and side shields in limited numbers for sale at each of the tournaments. All right. Uh, the we're going to continue to adhere to the CDC and Minnesota Department of Health guidelines. I know that there are uh, there's a big rise in the amount of respiratory illnesses going around. So if uh, you know, remind your students. I know it's hard to miss a tournament that you've been preparing for, but if people are running a fever or um, are sick or have tested positive recently for COVID. Uh, or influenza, we ask that they do not come uh, just to protect our, some of our more elderly and vulnerable population. All right, just a reminder, if you've, uh, we need to have the High Tech Kids demographic survey completed. Uh, it's due the Monday preceding your event. If you've already submitted it for the season for a previous tournament, that's fine. We don't need to have it a second time. We keep that on record. Uh, same thing with your consent and release. If this is the first uh, tournament that your team has been to this season, we do need you to turn in a uh, roster of consent and releases from your first dashboard. Please print it out. We don't accept that one in an electronic form. The demographic survey can be done electronically on our website. Uh, you can submit paper forms if that is what you need to do for your teams. That's okay. You can submit those at the tournament, but the, the roster from the first website's easiest. Okay, just a reminder that uh, before the qualifier, the Sunday preceding your event at midnight, by midnight, I should say, if your team plans to submit a promote video or a compass video, we do have a uh, jot form on our site uh, that they can submit that video. It tells you what format it can, we accept uh, when you get into our website, but uh, we have had just a warning. We have had some issues with the QuickTime format not always playing correctly on our Chromebook that we use to play it at the tournament. So if you have another um, format uh, choice, that would be smart. Uh, the uh, This year, well, in all years, we do delete the videos after the tournament. So if it's your second tournament and you've already submitted one, you do need to submit the videos again if you haven't uh, already won with those particular videos. We do not have any electronic feedback feedback request forms this year. FIRST has done away with those um, and will continue to do what we've always done, which is to create one for each team. And coaches will receive those back via email after the event. This is what our JAP form looks like for submitting the videos. All right, uh, everybody should be aware at this point, but uh, FIRST is officially allowing the use of AI 
for engineering portfolios and for coding. But our judges are wanting to see credit given. Uh, so if a team has used it for the engineering portfolio, just drop a little line like portfolio content created by team, you know, whatever, and chat GPT. Also, teams should be ready to explain to judges kind of how they use the AI, how it helped them or didn't help them. What did they learn from the process? Just like any technology that they're using, uh, they should be able to explain uh, what they gained from using that technology. All right. Uh, the drone design, uh, just be aware of whether it's legal or not legal. Uh, first put out a great little document that can help teams determine if their design is legal or not legal, especially if it's your team's first tournament that they've been at. Uh, the, uh, the inspection will include taking a look at the drones. And so please make sure the team brings a sample. Uh, if they have multiple designs, they need to bring a sample of each of the designs. But if they're using the same design throughout the tournament, they just need to bring one sample uh, of the red and the blue just to double check the colors are legal and to double check that the drone is legal. We have a piece of outdoor carpeting at the end of the at the audience side of the uh, playing field that is our landing zone and so it might be a little different if teams are used to just being on a gym floor or something uh, the airplanes come down and and land they tend to not quite slide as much uh, so it actually works a little bit in their favor right now but uh, it is something to be aware of that it might be a little different than say at the league meets or something like that Reminder that a portfolio is required for all of the judged awards, and it is the only documentation that's required for the awards, including the Think Award. Do not need to have an engineering notebook anymore. Uh, the Control Award does continue to be a separate submission form, and we do have a link for that on our website, and we'll have extra paper copies of it at the tournament as well if a team hasn't had a chance to fill that out ahead of time. But I really encourage uh, teams to complete a control award form if they're using any sort of sensors or uh, uh, any automation, doing anything with the autonomous period or anything like that. Uh, it's a great thing to get some recognition from the judges on that. A reminder that the portfolio can only be 15 pages plus the cover page. Uh, if you, if you, you're not required to put page numbers on the um, portfolios, there's been some confusion with that uh, at past tournaments. You're not required to have page numbers, but I have seen, I have seen portfolios where teams have put a great little table of contents with page numbers, but then didn't number the portfolio. It's not required to number the portfolio, but if they're going to put page numbers on a table of contents, then it's probably worth putting page numbers because it leaves the judges a little confused. Uh, make sure that teams are looking at that uh, game manual one to make sure that their cover page meets the requirements of what can and cannot be on there. Uh, and I recommend bringing at least two copies you must have one copy paper copy that is left with the judges during that morning interview but a second copy is handy to have in the pits for um, reference and things like that during the afternoon pit interviews so a second copy is very helpful Engineering notebook is really, truly optional. It can be used as a, uh, an extra source of information back in your pits, but I wouldn't bring it at all to the interview, just that portfolio to the interview. Uh, teams are gonna actually hand that engineering portfolio and their control award submission, if they have it, directly to the judges. It does not need to be turned in ahead of time. It does not need to be turned in at judging check-in. It just gets turned directly to the judges. But any other materials that they're gonna reference should be left back in the pits that they can show uh, the judges that documentation during the afternoon pit interviews. 
Just a reminder that the state tournament is going to be February 16th and 17th. And once again, we're going to have it at the St. Paul River Center and Roy Wilkins Auditorium. So it is a Friday evening uh, plus all day Saturday type of event. We will have for the uh, Burnsville and Marshall tournaments, each of those days will have three teams advancing to the state championship. And during the uh, SEGO league qualifiers, we're going to have six teams on Saturday and we have fewer teams on Sunday. So we'll have five teams advancing from the Sunday uh, collection. All right, just a little reminder for teams that they should be ready to explain a number of things during the interview. Uh, they can make a little five minute presentation at the beginning if they wish to, uh, but it is a five minute limit on that. And uh, that time generally starts right when they walk into the room. So it's good to have them practice ahead of time, kind of who's going to hand the items to the judges so that uh, they can get started immediately with their presentation. They don't waste time setting up or things like that. If they have anything to set up, have one student you know, work on the setup while everybody else starts talking. Uh, that's going to make it go a lot smoother. There's been some confusion um, with teams in the past that they thought they could set up and then decide when the five minutes was going to start. But uh, technically, the five minutes starts when they walk in to the room. All right. Um, don't uh, make sure they remember to highlight and talk about any 3D uh, printed parts that were fabricated. We do have the separate Stratasys Award uh, that is presented uh, in Minnesota for best use of 3D printed parts. And uh, the Control Award is great for them to explain any autonomous uh, mode programming that they've done, as well as any sensor use that they're doing. So be prepared to talk about both their outreach um, and their work with uh, promoting FIRST and STEM in their community, as well as their robot and all the iterations it went through. Uh, and I always like to remind coaches that failures are really an important part. And judges want to hear about how teams, uh, you know, what happened that didn't work and how did they push past it? So don't forget to include those types of things um, in their presentation. Just a reminder that on our website, each event has a page and that page has really important information. It has uh, the address for where the event's gonna be. It has links to our judging submission stuff. It will, uh, we're posting the inspection schedule for the morning schedule will be posted uh, soon. If it's not up there for your event yet, it'll be up there within a week of the event. Uh, and then there's also, you know, going to be links to this call and to uh, everything you need. Also, just a reminder, so the, if you're attending the Marshall event, uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. is the deadline for pre-orders for food, for lunch foods, and they're going to be doing, uh, offering Subway sandwich boxes. And if you are attending a Burnsville tournament, the deadline for pre-orders is on the 9th uh, at midnight, and that will be pizza pre-orders. There also will be other concessions available um, at the Burnsville the, um, uh, and, at, and at the uh, Marshall event. And then Otsego uh, for the league qualifiers uh, is not going to have any pre-order lunches, but there will be hot dogs and other foods available at the concessions. Chris, we had a question whether um, teams could use a PowerPoint in their judging um, session. So they can. Um, you know, I'll tell you from a judge's perspective, in the days I judged PowerPoints, um, you know, if they're using it for their own notes and cues, that works better than expecting judges to kind of follow along with a PowerPoint. Um, it's hard for judges to see the computer with where they're at and kind of follow along. And really the judges are interested in hearing 
the students talk, not interested in necessarily getting distracted too much by a PowerPoint. So that would just be my suggestion. They're certainly allowed. There's they can't count on any power in the rooms. So, you know, they do need to make sure their battery's fully charged if they're, you know, using a laptop or something like that. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. Um, Great. Yeah, you just you want to make sure the kids are the stars. Um, that they're not getting lost or depending too heavily on a screen so yeah and i think they're actually thinking about using a tv and just having it for like cad images or photos just to kind of um accentuate what they're talking about or emphasize what they're talking about so sure, sure. yeah yep and just make sure that anything they're bringing into the room is quick and easy to set up because like i said that five minutes starts right away and you don't want them to lose out um, with setup, throwing them off, or if they have some sort of technical glitch with it, that they're overly dependent on that and they get rattled, so. Right, sounds good, thank you. Yep, you bet. Uh, also after the event, this is where event results will be posted. So this is just a great resource for everybody to go to this um, event specific page for whatever tournament you're going to be traveling to. Also notice down at the bottom, there will be a general volunteer sign up genius uh, for the tournaments. And that's a great place to encourage um, uh, parents or other guests that are going to be there or if you have um, a team that's going to one tournament but wants to help out at another tournament that's a place they can go to sign up for helping to set up the tournament tear down the tournament they can help with check in at the front desk it's all of our non trained positions so it's it's everything except for our judges and. Uh, referees and things like that, the one change for the veteran coaches who are have had kids interested in MC we're switching it up in the middle of the year here where the MCs are going to be scheduled through high tech kids like we schedule our judges and referees versus through our sign up genius so if you have students who are interested in MCing, they should reach out directly to me uh, for me to get them assigned to a tournament they can fill out our volunteer interest form uh, on our website as well Right, here's our general schedule for the tournament. So uh, teams can start to arrive at that 7.20 uh, a.m. time frame and can get their pit area set up. Uh, and the inspections begin at eight, as well as the judging interviews. And those generally run from eight to 10. Now the Burnsville tournaments, we have a few extra teams. And so uh, we will have an additional judging session and so the final judging session will begin at 10 a.m instead of finishing at 10 a.m uh, but we've scheduled it so that they'll still be able to fit in practice rounds and things like that so it should all all work out uh, if you're uh, if you have families uh, a lot of times for ftc if, if you want families to come and see families are welcome to come into the judging interviews uh, though not many do at this age, but uh, they are welcome to do that. But opening ceremonies is really when things get rolling and we start our qualification matches soon after the opening ceremony. So that's often a time um, that families will start to show up to watch or they'll skip over the lunch break and start coming at one o'clock. That's what I used to do when I would go watch um, FTC teams that I um, was cheering for is I would show up about one o'clock and be able to watch most of the qualification matches and be there for alliance selection. So we generally, you know, the, the times in the afternoon can vary. Our closing ceremonies might start at 4.30. They might not start till five. Uh, just kind of depends when those semifinal and final matches finish up and when the judges have completed their deliberations and have their award script ready. So there's some flexibility there. But the morning times are pretty, pretty tight, right on schedule. All right, just a reminder for teams for that judging session, they need to remember to bring their engineering portfolio, their control award form if they have it, 
and their robot. We've had teams show up without the robot for the judging, but the, the judges want to see the robot. They want to see that in action. You get 15 minutes in the room with the judges. Five minutes of that is that team presentation. And then 10 minutes will just be questions and discussion uh, with the judges. And so that's a a time when judges will be asking, you know, specific or open ended questions, but also they may end with, you know, what's the what's the thing you want us to really remember. Uh, and so students should, you know, kind of have their talking points ready that they want to keep coming back to over and over during that 10 minute uh, Q and A. During robot and field inspection, so there's always some confusion with newer teams with that, but. Uh, that's going to happen in the performance area the judging happens in a separate area the robot and field inspection is in the performance area the competition area and when you come to those inspections they'll be on your morning schedule need to make sure you have your robot your driver hub your drones if you have a team element make sure you bring that as well okay all of those things need to be uh present to be ready for the inspection it's helpful um, there's a link on our website to be able to see what is the checklist for the robot inspection and what is the checklist for the field inspection. Those are two separate events. Uh, and teams can go through that before they ever get to the tournament to kind of see, will I pass the first time or am I not likely to pass? So inspectors are really looking to pass the robots, but they need to be watching for safety hazards. They also want to catch any reliability issues um, so that teams are having the most successful tournament possible. Uh, so and all the they want to make sure all the robots are following the same rules as well. Uh, we haven't had a robot yet who hasn't eventually passed inspection and been able to compete this season. So uh, inspectors work with the teams. If a team needs a lot more technical help, especially if you're a rookie team, we've had um, teams that weren't going to come to the tournament because they didn't have a drivable robot, but we encourage them to come. And by, you know, by qualification match time, they had a driving robot because other teams are willing to help out. That's a great part about FIRST is that cooperation aspect uh, where we'll have you know, more experienced teams happy to help um, the less experienced teams so that every team can compete. So uh, we before our opening ceremonies, there will be a driver's meeting uh, and it other team members are welcome to come as well, but you need to at least have your drive team there at a minimum. And that's going to be a time that the head referee and also the field manager are going to talk about things teams need to be aware of, how the matches will run, any rules on the competition area that they need to be aware of. And that also at the end of that driver's meeting, the qualification match schedule will be distributed. So the only schedule we publish ahead of time is that morning judging and inspection schedule. The match schedule comes uh, at that driver's meeting, okay? The match schedule doesn't have set times on it, uh, just the order. And so teams need to keep track of what match is currently running. We will have cures that will you know, kind of help out, make sure teams get there, but really it's your team's responsibility to make sure that you queue up uh, at a good point in time that you're, not late for your match. Any team that's going to have their uh, are going to be in the first or second qualification match, they're going to queue up or get on the field before we even start opening ceremony. So just be aware of that when you get your match. If you have one of the first two, just go and get your robot right away and get it set up on the playing field. Uh, during qualification matches, we also have pit judging so that's when groups of judges are going to be visiting teams in the pit area to ask follow-up questions based on the morning judging session it may be you know one or more of the same judges that the team saw in the morning or it may be completely different judges and so it's important that you keep people available in your pit whenever uh, the team is not actively competing. So match play takes priority. 
Um, and if you have a match coming up and judges have just stopped by, feel free to let them know uh, and, you know, politely ask them to um, come back and talk to you as soon as you're done with that match play. But don't just have your whole team watching matches the whole time and have it so the judges can't find you. So. Okay, once we've gone through the qualification matches, uh, we will have the alliance selection and we do have a video on our website that walks through the whole process of how that works for any rookie teams that kind of want to understand it ahead of time, but it also will be explained uh, before we start the alliance selection, but just the, the quick um, and dirty is that the top four teams after qualification matches will start out as alliance captains that may shift as as they join up with each other, but there will be four alliances that will be chosen. Uh, all of our tournaments have enough teams at them that there will be um, three teams on each alliance and four alliances so there'll be 12 teams selected during that process we encourage teams that aren't selected during it to stay around and watch and stay around for the award ceremony um it's always so sad when a team thinks they're not going to win an award and they leave early and then they win an award and they're not there to you know get the accolades and celebrate you know we'll get the trophy to them but it's it's not never quite the same so uh really encourage your team to stay you never know uh whether a team is going to win an award or not uh unless you show up without an engineering portfolio then i guess you know you know you're not going to win an award but um otherwise everybody is in the running for those awards all right so something else to be aware of uh we do have a special high-tech kids purple gear award I know that some teams that are have upcoming tournaments have already submitted their information to us, but again, we have application on our website for the Purple Gear Award, and we do accept those on a rolling basis. So uh, it's you can get it in. Um, usually, with those, they need to be in by about Tuesday. We don't have a hard deadline, but a, a, by about Tuesday, the week before your the week of your tournament, Tuesday, the week of your tournament is a safe point at which to have that application completed. Uh, and uh, this has to do with uh, helping out. So these are teams that have helped us at three different high tech, at least three different high tech kids events and three separate outreach of, um, events in their community. They can apply for this Purple Gear Award. They'll get a certificate. They'll get this uh, 3D printed um, Purple Gear Award, uh, and then we'll also send you um, some graphics that you can um, share in your, you know, engineering portfolio and materials that you put out with your team. So these were the teams that earned it last year, and um, this year we're on on track to have a similar number. So. Just be aware also on our website, there's information about the Stratasys scholarships. And this is something that students can self-nominate themselves uh, and just fill out our uh, the online essay process. So there's information for this again on our website. Uh, needs to be a 10th or 11th grade student. And they must be an active member of a Minnesota FTC team this year to apply. All right. We always need more volunteers and I've had some great new volunteers come out of um, parents or coaches or mentors this year. Uh, it's a great way to see uh, from a different perspective uh, what's happening with the judging and with the refereeing and things like that. Also, if you work for a company that has a volunteer uh, program, feel free to connect with us to if you ever want us to come and chat with, you know, for a volunteer event or anything like that uh, or present we are always happy to do that because uh, we get we just have such a great group of volunteers but we're always looking for more so all right do we have additional questions that have popped up in the chat or anything not yet but maybe somebody will unmute and just go ahead and ask yeah feel free 
the biggest things to remember are to make sure that if you're doing one of those videos that you get it submitted uh, before midnight, the Sunday before your tournament, as well as if you're pre-ordering lunches for your teams, make sure you get that done. And uh, if you're Marshall, make sure you get that done tomorrow. And if you're um, Burnsville, make sure you get it done before the ninth. So. All right. Great. Well, thank you all so much for taking some time tonight. And we're finishing right on time. <laughs> but if you have questions or if you have specific question that you think the group doesn't care about and you want to hang out for um, afterward, that's fine as well. So last call for group questions. All right. Thank you, everybody.